السلام علیکم خواتین و حضرات وسیم احسن ویلکمس یو ٹو لیکچر نمبر تھرٹی سکس آف برانڈ مینجمنٹ ایم کے ٹی سکسٹی فور ایٹ دی ورچوئل یونیورسٹی آف پاکستان دی ٹاپک از اسٹل کمیونیکیشن میننگ کمیونیکیٹنگ یور برانڈس پوزیشننگ ان دا موسٹ افیکٹیو وے ود دا ہیلپ آف سو مین ڈفرینٹ ٹولس اینڈ دا ٹولس دیٹ وی آلریڈی ہیو کورڈ سو فار آر ایڈورٹائزنگ اینڈ پروموشنس We still have a few more tools at our disposal to communicate our brand's positioning. And uh, the one I'm going to start talking about is the public relationing, or in other words, PR. PR is uh, something which also can uh, help you with the leverage with your brand with the help of uh, the magazines, newspapers, and also television. It is because of this public relationing exercise that uh, you talk about uh, your brand in relation to a success story or uh, in relation to uh, certain innovative features uh, which you have created and uh, you think you should be talking about the competitive advantage which those features bring to your brand. So in other words, uh, you really can sustain that competitive advantage uh, by having coverage in magazines and newspapers and also through television shows which you can sponsor. Sustaining the competitive advantage is one of the prime things, the prime objectives which you can achieve with the help of the advertorials. That's what they call in the magazines and the television shows which you sponsor. So this uh, the tool of uh, the communication has uh, the, its own uh, the importance and has its own the mechanism. Uh, how it works is uh, the basically through the relationship that uh, you have with uh, uh, different agencies. As and when uh, you step up your uh, advertising or as and when uh, you get into advertising and uh, the other uh, the promotional campaigns uh, with the help of different agencies, like I said, you develop relationships with them. And uh, these agencies and also the people from uh, the media, they see to it that uh, the people like you, meaning their clients, they gain importance and uh, they come into limelight and uh, their brands are uh, really promoted uh, in the most effective way if the brands really uh, carry a very tangible promise. So that's, uh, that's a given which you uh, must be aware of. If the brand uh, does not really carry a very effective and uh, tangible kind of a promise, then uh, you may not get um, total support from uh, the media in terms of uh, a public relationing exercise. You also can talk about uh, the social responsibilities that uh, your company has uh, voluntarily assumed to itself. Uh, for example, if the company has uh, decided to go into afforestation, the meaning plantation of um, you know, trees along the roadsides, you should talk about that. But maybe you know, one of the executives, one of the high ups from the company can uh, give an interview to the media and uh, bring uh, the whole thing into a limelight. If you are uh, helping uh, special children uh, by uh, promoting uh, their uh, the cause of uh, the well-being, then uh, you should um, talk about that also. The objective here is to put together a, a very effective strategy with uh, the well-pursued goals uh, that can uh, bring uh, your brand into uh, limelight and uh, that can uh, get your brand with positive publicity uh, in an effective way and not in a cheap way. That is something that we have to keep in our minds. That's very important. So the well-pursued uh, the goals and uh, an effective strategy in order to see to it that uh, the whole thing becomes attention-getting is uh, an important objective of uh, a PR exercise. Uh, PR uh, is not always uh, exercised um, in um, bringing about publicity for positive things, that you can also get into a PR exercise when a situation is negative. And uh, to give you the one example, I will refer you to the 2006 bird flu crisis. You will recall that uh, there are uh, the companies uh, within our country that really educated uh, their customers 
in relation to the crisis which really inflicted the industry and uh, they educated the, the consumers uh, about the precautions they should take and uh, they communicated with uh, their consumers in other ways in other ways in uh, a very comprehensive way so as uh, they could really uh, educate themselves about which decisions to take uh, and which not to take in terms of buying so that is an important exercise uh, which you uh, can undertake when situation is negative uh, suppose you know something goes wrong with uh, your product and uh, you find that out uh, from the market so the meaning there is uh, a, a serious uh, kind of a quality with a defect in the product and uh, you have to deal with uh, the situation um, at that juncture it is a huge challenge and a tall order well, in the first place, you start with the recalling uh, with that product which is sitting in the market uh, just to make sure that uh, the defective product does not get into any further hands. And uh, you also like to recall uh, the, that uh, the product or those items which already have gotten into the hands of the, the final consumer. So coming up with uh, the mechanism with which uh, is going to take care of uh, that kind of and exercise uh, does carry with itself a very important element of uh, the PR because uh, while you undertake that kind of an exercise you also have to continuously communicate with uh, your customers and consumers uh, why it has taken place and uh, what are the measures that you have undertaken to correct that because you never would like your customers to have the impression that uh, you have breached a contract. Um, as a matter of fact, the challenge in, in that kind of a situation is to convert um, a negative situation into a positive one uh, by um, testifying the before your audience that you are a very responsible company that is talking facts with its uh, with the customers and that is really concerned about uh, their customers uh, who uh, have uh, somehow bought a defective product and uh, in the process you convince them that uh, that kind of defect will not take place again. Uh, like I said, it is a tall order, but the fundamental principle in uh, managing uh, this kind of a crisis is that you get into um, some level of contingency the planning, which basically relates if and then relationships. If this happens, then we shall do that. If this happens, we shall do that. So it is basically the if and then relationships that uh, you have to develop, uh, but then easier said than done. Uh, there are situations which crop up uh, without uh, stirring your imagination before they uh, cropped up. So uh, what do you do in that kind of a situation? So it is um, at that point that you have a challenge to deal with that kind of a situation. So uh, the managing uh, that is um, a, a PR exercise and uh, you are going to have to be very straight and honest with your with the customers. That is another fundamental uh, while undertaking this exercise. If you start uh, playing games uh, with the objective of outsmarting uh, your customer, or thinking that you can outsmart them, uh, you forget about that. The most fundamental thing is to stay very straight and take them into confidence. And take them into confidence in a way that uh, they do not end up losing confidence in your product. Instead, they should have uh, the thinking, well, this kind of a situation can inflict any company and uh, going to be happy at least that they have uh, acknowledged uh, the lapse that uh, took place uh, somewhere along the, the manufacturing process and they are really concerned about uh, the defective product. They're going to rectify it and uh, they're going to be much richer in their experience because the reputation of the company uh, tells that uh, the company will never let its customers down. So this is uh, an important tool of uh, communication which you can uh, make use of. You only have to be careful 
about uh, the circumstances and situations in which you really can uh, use this tool of uh, the PR. Another uh, the tool uh, I'm going to talk about is uh, the event marketing. Event marketing and sponsorships uh, really uh, are meant for uh, creating goodwill for the company and uh, for the brand. You have to be uh, very well connected in the market in order to be able to uh, make use of uh, these tools. When you are known for undertaking event marketing, many organizations will contact you to undertake their events. And whether you can get into things like I talked about earlier, the meaning of the award ceremonies or the sponsorships of the television programs in terms of cooking, in terms of usage of the products. In, in different ways and uh, the coverage of sports events and uh, these are the things which you are very well exposed to and therefore uh, I do not think I really have to throw a lot of light on that uh, but uh, what you really need to uh, keep in mind is that uh, event marketing is definitely more economical than advertising in the meaning it is uh, less expensive and um, it uh, offers you a very good opportunity of reaching your target market. Now, here, the, the most important question is, the event that you are covering, does that really help you reach your target market? You may cover an event in uh, the most effective uh, way, so to say, uh, meaning apparently, but uh, if you are not really reaching your target market, then coverage of that event is no good for the company and for the brand. So, in other words, the fundamental that we have to keep in our mind is that uh, the target market reach uh, by covering an, a certain event on television or uh, in terms of uh, the function uh, at a certain location um, is very important. Uh, in terms of the connectivity with uh, the uh, target uh, that is going to buy our brand. Another the fundamental that, uh, that we have to keep in our mind is that uh, while executing the event, uh, that we uh, they should not, that we as brand managers they should not really get subdued by the glamour of the event itself. So uh, what it really means is that uh, as the event goes by, you have to talk about your brand, meaning you have to communicate with your target market about your brand in direct or indirect subtle ways that you remind them all the time that the event is being organized and executed by your particular brand. That is a very important objective not to be forgotten. With that, we now get on to another uh, the tool of uh, the communication which is uh, extremely important. All of the tools are important but this one uh, has uh, become uh, the much more important um, under the, the present days uh, the technological advances and this is uh, the, what you call direct marketing. Uh, do not get uh, the surprised if I am going to talk uh, the all over again uh, about direct marketing uh, but here I'm going to talk about direct marketing in the context of communications and not in the context of the channels. I did talk about that in the context of uh, the channels of distribution, but here it is going to revolve around the, uh, the communication process. Uh, this mode of uh, the marketing owes uh, basically to the very well structured uh, the communications and uh, that takes place uh, mostly in the form of uh, the catalogs and uh, this uh, the mode of uh, the communication uh, is uh, very um, common and uh, popular in developed countries. Uh, this still has to uh, make its mark in our market but uh, the time may not be far uh, when this kind of practice uh, will be undertaken by people like you. So uh, we've got to talk about this We've got to know the importance and impact of uh, this mode of communication. Uh, direct marketing in uh, the terms of communication has uh, become popular or took hold in the markets where it is uh, a norm rather than a deviation from the standard practice 
okay, where people really are got a short of time. So because of the shortage of time and uh, the fact that uh, the customers are of the opinion that uh, the products could be being sold directly uh, the by way of uh, the very effective communication or quality products, customers really opt for this medium. And uh, they really uh, are sold uh, the, to the effort undertaken by brand managers, so the meaning the communication process unleashed uh, by the brand managers uh, the by way of catalogs. But technological advances uh, have uh, brought certain innovations to do this process. Not that uh, the catalogs uh, have ceased to exist, but uh, thanks to the latest technology by way of which that we really can uh, communicate with uh, the, the customer uh, not by sending uh, by uh, the postage mail to uh, those catalogs, but rather by electronic mails and through uh, the internet. And uh, those are the kind of things uh, which you are very well aware of and very well exposed to. And uh, we, we now have uh, gotten into an era of uh, direct marketing and uh, the communications to which you may call uh, new marketing. The terminology of new marketing has been uh, coined by one of the marketing experts and uh, this basically refers to the advances that uh, have taken place um, owing to information technology. And uh, the concept has gotten a lot of strength in terms of uh, your ability to uh, reach your uh, the customers on a uh, one-on-one -one basis. Uh, when you do that, you really can communicate with uh, your customers uh, in a much more effective way. And uh, those are the effective ways which I'm going to talk about uh, in relation to this method of communication. You really can uh, maintain a uh, one-to-one -one relationship because uh, you uh, are not only aware of uh, the name and the address of the customer, but you also are aware of the, the preferences of that particular customer in relation to different campaigns which you kicked off in the past. The meaning that you know because of this communication process, the kind of reaction or the response which your one particular customer showed to the, your one particular campaign. So it is uh, not only restricted to the name, address and demographics, it really uh, transcends uh, those limits and uh, gets into uh, so many other things uh, which fall within the area of uh, psychographics and uh, which fall within the uh, response uh, effect area of your customers, so to say. And uh, you really can then uh, improve your uh, campaigns uh, for uh, the times to come because you know the responses given by your uh, the customers to your one particular campaign. And that is the, the beauty of this communication. And it doesn't take a long time to get those responses. Relationship has to be developed in this kind of uh, a communication process because uh, without that uh, relationship, you may not be able to generate the kind of responses which you are wanting to generate. So the ones that the relationship between your company or your brand and the customer is developed, you have to further nurture it. And you nurture it in a way that your customers do not get really tired of the communication which takes place every now and then, rather you have to carry that out in the most productive way uh, in the most optimal way that customers do end up uh, providing you with the responses which uh, are best suited to improving your brand-based customer model. That is the, the basic um, the idea the behind uh, this communication. Uh, the data bank the which you maintain has got to be uh, capitalized on and has got to be exploited to the fullest uh, so that uh, you know uh, the individual preferences in relation to different uh, promotional situations. That is the fundamental that you have to, uh, to keep in mind.
So what I'm talking about is that um, you can maintain uh, the different kinds of records you know, for each customer uh, that uh, show not only uh, the different uh, you know, the kinds of um, relevant classification data uh, as name and uh, demographics, but rather uh, their individual uh, the preferences and their responses to uh, certain previous campaigns that you carried out. So previous purchases and uh, responses uh, to those uh, the communications with which uh, you carried out uh, after those uh, the purchases in the world made uh, that gives you further uh, the insights into uh, the what you should be doing next time. So that is the beauty of this uh, uh, the process. But you really can uh, analyze right down to the individual to the level of uh, what you should be doing. The fact is that um, companies uh, can um, really uh, target individuals and groups of individuals in a much more accurate way not only effective but much more accurate way in line with the objectives which the companies have. Uh, the companies, like I said, uh, they can uh, measure the, the response effects with the help of uh, this kind of communication. Uh, there are uh, the FMCG the companies uh, which uh, are getting into uh, direct marketing uh, only because they can uh, communicate directly with their customers. Now, it is not easy and it is not really possible for every FMCG company. It really is uh, possible and less difficult for those FMCG companies uh, that uh, offer a host of the different uh, items and uh, a broad portfolio of brands so that uh, they carry some kind of attraction while communicating with their customers and while delivering those products to their customers. So what I'm saying is that if you are a one brand company, you may not be as effective in comparison with a company that carries a broad portfolio of products and broad portfolio of brands. Such companies are maintaining a data bank consisting of millions and millions. And uh, because uh, this kind of uh, marketing and uh, communication is free of uh, uh, geographical, geographic borders, especially in relation to the developed markets, uh, you can really get into contact with uh, customers uh, who are uh, across your uh, national borders. An interesting and challenging concept as it is, you've got to exercise this uh, in the context of your market, uh, the given the opportunities and limitations. Uh, you have a lot of opportunities and you also have limitations uh, to use uh, an advanced method of uh, the selling. Uh, the consider all those factors and uh, then make the decision. Uh, to give you uh, some uh, insights into how you really can uh, go forward with um, uh, direct marketing uh, with the help of uh, direct communication, uh, you can get into JVs, the meaning joint ventures with uh, the like-minded companies and uh, the get into uh, a direct effort. Uh, the you can uh, the join hands with uh, the your distributors as uh, an extended enterprise and do, do something direct. You can uh, the join hands with those companies uh, which offers you opportunities of uh, the co-branding and uh, the exercising the concept of co-branding at the same time uh, the becoming direct it may not be a bad idea. So this is what I said, uh, look into your opportunities and uh, do not uh, be uh, mindless of uh, the limitations which uh, the uh, exercise uh, may present and may present in a negative way. Uh, based on the models which you have uh, developed, you, know, you can tailor the offer, meaning the direct offer in relation to the individual uh, preferences. And that is the, the beauty of uh, uh, this um, the model. Uh, just think about uh, the direct delivery service offered by uh, so many different uh, fast food restaurants uh, in our country. 
uh, not only they are adding to their sales, not only they're offering a better customer value, and you will recall what customer value is, good price, good performance, good service, and all those things. So not only they are doing all that, they are also generating on daily basis, rather uh, on, on every minute basis, uh, a data bank which they are going to use for the four days to come and for months to come, for years to come. They have uh, a complete data bank into which you know, they can mine and they can come up with just about uh, the right most information needed under a particular set of circumstances which really can lead you uh, to have your customers uh, give you a response uh, in the light of the preferences which you thought are just about the preferences uh, that they have and uh, that will testify that the decisions which you made were just about the right most decisions and uh, you made those decisions only because you had a beautiful data bank. So this is uh, what you really can uh, do with uh, the help of uh, direct communication. Meaning direct marketing with direct communication, electronic communication in particular. Empirical evidence uh, has it that uh, the sales through direct marketing uh, really are registering um, increases and um, the, the sales through the catalogs and uh, through uh, the internet uh, have topped uh, the more than $500 billion globally. It is not a small amount. And um, uh, even the chain stores, which uh, have been very traditional in their approach, are also getting into uh, sales based on internet, meaning uh, direct communication, which uh, takes place between those stores and uh, the customers. Just imagine the, the catalog which is uh, there uh, as part of the website, the pictures which you have access to, the alternatives that you can make, uh, the, the pricing variations and uh, the, the variations in terms of uh, you know, different formats, uh, different ingredients and uh, all those uh, the extensions which we talked about and which we know and then being able to make the final decision uh, sitting uh, in the, uh, the coziness of your own uh, house uh, is uh, not a small advantage. So uh, these stores uh, realizing the advantage uh, which I've just uh, talked about uh, have caught into uh, the sales uh, based on uh, the internet and uh, the level of sales uh, which they have registered uh, with the help of this medium is very different from the ones uh, that they generate through their different stores. So in other words, um, again, the evidence has it that, uh, that these sales are added sales. These sales are incremental sales. These have not really cut into the sales which take place uh, through their stores. So there is no cannibalization, so to say. And uh, if uh, you can think of uh, getting into uh, this exercise in light of the, the examples and the concepts that I've talked about, uh, you are going to be a creative the brand manager. The huge the databases or uh, the data banks which uh, these companies have to themselves are not only helping them to reach their customers in, in a more efficient and a more effective way, these uh, the databases are uh, really uh, attracting other organizations which uh, uh, may like to make use of those databases. If you are a company that has uh, a huge the database uh, relating your uh, the customers, now do not forget that they are the same people who are somebody else's customers also. So the other companies uh, that are at a loss to create that kind of a database um, tend to approach you uh, with um, a business proposition in terms of uh, buying that data. And it is not a bad proposition. 
not only you are uh, maintaining that database uh, to be very effective in relation to your own customers, you are also using that database as uh, a product line in itself and a, a product in itself the which you are selling to the potential customers in a different creative way. And that's not a bad deal. You can rent that information or you can sell that information and uh, that becomes a business proposition in itself. That's the beauty of uh, for the maintaining uh, such data banks. The use of uh, this medium is increasing at a fast pace and uh, it is because of that reason that uh, you see the many uh, the ads in the main media with uh, the addresses of uh, the websites. And uh, that really gives you uh, the dimension of uh, a global uh, the player uh, if you can afford to you know, play the game that way. Delivery in uh, this kind of a situation is the responsibility of uh, the seller and uh, wherever you are, uh, whatever circumstances uh, you are in, you've got to decide the, the mechanism for delivery. Meaning, uh, are you going to deliver just one item or are you going to deliver items uh, which aggregate to a certain level of uh, um, amount of uh, rupees? whether you are going to contain yourself just within the national borders or are you going to um, conduct yourself across the borders. So these are the questions which you have to answer before you um, are going to move forward with uh, this kind of a model. Uh, but the fact remains that uh, this offers a lot of new global opportunities and uh, depending upon the uh, nature of the purchase, and uh, the value of the purchase, you're going to decide the delivery to the mechanism. Now, having talked about the uh, emerging nature of uh, uh, the communications in uh, such a direct and such a fast way, the main, main question that should come into our minds is, how many people surfing the net are going to be really interactive? But that is uh, a very weighty question. Are there so many people uh, who surf the net just for the sake of interest? They, they go into different websites, uh, collect information, analyze that, uh, discuss that, but uh, they do not take any action. So in other words, you have to relate uh, the action on part of the uh, customers in relation to the response effects. If uh, you have um, undertaken uh, this uh, medium of um, uh, direct selling, um, you should be able to generate a decent level of uh, the customer base. And uh, if you do not really succeed in uh, generating that, then uh, the effort may not be very productive. Uh, but the evidence that we have so far is uh, if you uh, put your toes into the water uh, before really jumping into it, um, meaning they go by the whole thing very carefully, after studying all the pros and cons, uh, you really can um, make use of uh, this medium in a positive, effective way. This brings to an end our discussion on um, direct marketing. And uh, all I can say is that uh, you've got to make your decisions when you enter the practical field in light of the opportunities and uh, limitations. And I'm sure that you will make uh, the good decisions whether you want to go into the direct marketing through catalogs or through the internet or maybe through both. The opportunities are there. But be mindful of your limitations. And uh, with this, we now get on to the, the next uh, the tool of uh, communication which deals with uh, the internal uh, involvement of uh, all those within the company uh, responsible for the brand. The meaning communication which has to be done by the marketing department with others who are the part of the overall team. Unless we let everyone know what the organization is uh, are trying to achieve uh, with the help of uh, communication strategies, the communication strategies either will not uh, fully come to life or will uh, 
take on meanings that very contrary to the brand promise and uh, this uh, will be because of the fact that uh, the people will not know what you really are up to i would like to take you back to the example of sandwiches about which i talked in my formative lectures think for a while about the the brand picture of the which was the developed by you full of promises a beautiful contract and uh, the also means to the deliver that the but the only lapse the which uh, the took place the was the communication that you were somehow uh, not in a position to uh, the communicate the the brand's objectives uh, the to the operations department and uh, the operations department uh, the at their end uh, was uh, the working and was investing all its energies into creating a beautiful product uh, not mindful of the fact that the product had to be delivered uh, through direct delivery within a certain uh, amount of time so in other words the amount of time they were taking in preparing those sandwiches did not really correspond with uh, your uh, strategy to reach your uh, the customers within that given amount of time so there was a cross purpose of uh, the functions because uh, operations did not know what you really wanted so this is uh, the classic example of uh, uh, internal communication uh, or classic example of a lack of internal communication the the kinds of uh, the conflicts it uh, really um, creates you uh, therefore uh, you have to make sure that um, the the brand's objectives of the brand's vision the brand's picture uh, and brand's promises all are the shared by the all the departments who are involved in um, the preparing the brand and uh, in uh, the making it possible uh, for the marketing department or for the company uh, to sell that and to sell that in a way it is promised to sell that in a way the ad copy claims there should be no gap between the your uh, the practice or your practices and uh, the ad copy which is claimed by the company so in other words you have to interact with uh, all the touch points that uh, the brand management may have within the company educating all the, the functional areas about the objectives like i could have said is of utmost importance you know what happens when you do that when you do that the people start feeling uh, the very confident in the first place about uh, the overall objectives uh, of the company and uh, they become very clear about brand's vision about the brand's picture and on top of that they start owning uh, the whole uh, the process of communication they take uh, a sense of ownership into it because which should be the ultimate objective of uh, the internal communication and uh, the once you know somebody has taken ownership of uh, any process whether within the organization uh, the chances are the delivery of uh, the product uh, is going to be very much in line with the promise it makes so that is what uh, the, the internal communication is all about that uh, you must be able to uh, get the muster for the support you know, from all those quarters and angles the which are involved into making your brand a success into leveraging your brand which creates value for the company and uh, the offers value to the customer so in uh, developing your uh, brand based communication plans you you've got to think of every stage of communication that a customer may have with your brand your strategies could must lay a specific emphasis on all possible encounters that the brand will have with the customer uh, you will recall that uh, the brand communicates with uh, the customers uh, the before buying and uh, the during the sale and uh, the after the sale uh, this is something uh, the which we discussed in, in connection with uh, uh, the one of the prime uh, the definitions of uh, the brand management so that you've got to be the mindful of uh, your strategies um, that must lay special emphasis on all encounters that uh, the brand is going to have with uh, your customers in all the stages
with this, uh, the discussion on uh, communications uh, comes to an end. And uh, before I give you the conclusion, uh, let me uh, give you a recap of uh, what we've discussed so far over the last five lectures. I started talking about uh, the communications, uh, the importance of it, and uh, the very fact that uh, it is because of uh, the communication that we bring the brand's positioning to life and uh, we deal basically with uh, the four strategic elements uh, that are of uh, very high significance. And those are um, uh, the corporate vision, uh, the brand vision, uh, the brand promise, and brand positioning. So in other words, we've got to understand these uh, the four uh, strategic elements, their implications, and their relationships with each other before we really can craft a very good communications strategy. And before uh, we uh, can uh, craft a strategy, we have to understand the tools of communication uh, available to us in order to make that strategy work. And uh, I talked about uh, the different tools of uh, communication like advertising, promotions, uh, event marketing, uh, the PR, and um, internal communication. The importance, importance of all these tools and uh, also the fact that uh, the advertising and promotions could happen to be the two most visible and uh, most widely used dynamic tools of communication. When it comes to advertising, we've got to understand um, the, the philosophy behind the copy, copy making, and the brand strategy. Because uh, without having to uh, understand the, uh, the fundamentals of uh, the copy making, there is no way that we can create a good advertising campaign. So uh, I talked about uh, what are the fundamentals and uh, how they work, especially in relation to the response effects of uh, the customers the while the, you are going through an advertising campaign. And uh, it was in relation to those response effects that I talked about uh, the phase of awareness, which is the first phase, uh, leading to comprehension, to um, retention, and to final action. And uh, it is in relation to the final action that we bring promotions into the game, and uh, the promotions really supplement advertising. So, uh, the understanding uh, uh, the brand-based strategy in terms of uh, the communication, the meanings in terms of advertising and promotions in particular, I uh, went through the concepts of uh, the copy and copy strategy and uh, then uh, related uh, all the uh, tools uh, available uh, at your disposal uh, with uh, the copy and copy strategy and uh, came up with um, uh, the different possibilities of having a mixed bag of either advertising or promotions. In other words, if we understand the rules that lay the foundation for uh, developing the right copy, in light of all the strategic elements, uh, the product's basic nature, its character, its values, and uh, the promises it makes, and, and why those are deliverable, then we are on the right lines. And uh, following the rules rightly, we really can bridge the gap between uh, the brand's promise and brand's positioning. And you will recall that uh, the brand's promise deals with the present and uh, the brand's positioning deals with the future. So in other words, uh, this is what the vision is all about. You know that you are here and you also know that you want to be there. So what is it that you want to do? That is what the, the practice of communications is all about. And uh, we uh, know different tools that we have at our disposal. Let us now uh, proceed toward uh, conclusion of uh, the, this uh, discussion. Uh, the branding is all about uh, the driving the asset value of the brand. This is uh, what we can conclude. And uh, it is the communication which uh, brings uh, the branding to life and uh, which creates the value for the brand. And that is how the, the asset value of the brand is delivered. Because communication happens to be the main vehicle to which uh, the drives that the value. For uh, that, uh, the, we have to be the very clear about uh, the brand's vision and uh, the brand's promise and brand's positioning. This is what I already have talked about while giving, giving you the recap 
and this is a very very important conclusion with that uh, the clarity you really can um, identify uh, your uh, target market because uh, unless uh, you really know who you are talking with your communication is not going to be effective we can also conclude that uh, the communication is all about creating awareness comprehension and the final action we can conclude from uh, the discussion that uh, if you can develop uh, the right relationships among uh, the various tools of uh, communication and uh, the come up with uh, the most optimal bag of uh, communications you really can succeed in uh, developing the right level of awareness and comprehension and to generate the desired action uh, so in other words you really can create uh, your uh, customers you can uh, maintain those customers and uh, by maintaining those customers uh, you can create uh, the loyalty and uh, you can create a lot of value uh, for the brand uh, in terms of the company and also in terms of the customer and uh, that is what the whole thing is all about now let me uh, summarize uh, what we have uh, covered so far uh, over the last 35 36 lectures uh, we started with um, uh, the concept of uh, the brand management and uh, then we learned how to develop uh, the brand vision and that was the, the first phase of uh, the brand management strategic process the second phase of um, the strategic process uh, relates um, determining your brand picture and uh, in developing the brand's picture uh, we learned uh, how to uh, determine brand's image and uh, create uh, the brand's contract and uh, develop a customer model uh, with that uh, we culminated the uh, phase number two and uh, they got on to the phase number three which is all about strategy making and uh, in this phase uh, we started with uh, developing uh, a position for the brand and uh, the brand's positioning so to say it was the point of departure uh, of the phase which is all about strategy making we then got on to extending the brand and looked into the how you can extend the brand in, in so many different ways and what kind of uh, the brand architecture and uh, the portfolios uh, you can have uh, while you go through the process of uh, creating brands and that uh, took us on to choosing the, uh, the right uh, the channels of distribution uh, to leverage the brand and uh, after uh, we were done with uh, uh, the channels of distribution we got on to the topic of uh, the communications which uh, we have finished today and uh, this does not end um, phase number three we still have uh, the one more step to the learn about and that is about uh, the pricing of the brand uh, pricing in a way that the brand stands leveraged and that basically is the uh, theme of the course and um, that basically is the uh, core around which uh, the whole uh, the brand management revolves so we shall be uh, discussing uh, the pricing uh, in the next lecture Allah Hafiz until then and I look forward to talking with you in the next lecture thank you very much